Okay, guys, here we are going to get started on the makeover of this French wedding armoire. I affectionately call this the lovebird armoire because it has two lovebirds at the top along with many other ornate features. I am getting started with this by applying a coat of, it's a kind of a bright pumpkin orange color. Now you'll notice when it goes on, it looks a lot lighter. And so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, when you apply colors like pink colors to really dark furniture, like this is a mahogany, the whole piece is mahogany and it has a like a cherry mahogany color stain on it. Um, the pink color is going to go on a lot lighter than what the actual color is. And you'll be able to see that as it dries. Going through this piece, I am just applying as I'm getting started. Uh, I'm just applying the orange paint. And you'll see for the whole base coat, all I'm trying to do is get it on there. There's no um, real method other than getting the, the paint on to the piece and not putting it on in heavy layers. So I think that is the biggest tip that I can give is when you apply your base coat, your first coat to most of the projects that you'll be doing on furniture, you really want to avoid doing heavy layers. Like never expect your first coat to do full coverage. Once in a while, you will find that your first coat, you like it the way it is. And so do you see what I mean on with this bright orange color that I had? Look, once it dries, look how light it is. I mean, it's almost just a, a, a super faded orangish color, like almost like an orangish tan, orangish tan. And I had actually had somebody, when I had shared a picture on my personal Facebook page, of just this stage after this orange coat was all the way on. Somebody had commented and said, I commend you for your prep work because they actually thought that I had sanded all the way down and that orange was like the wood grain underneath, which was kind of funny. For my prep work for this, all I did was deep clean it and I scuff sanded it and then I went ahead and wiped that, you know, all the sanding dust off. And then I started with my painting. So this piece had pretty simple prep work on it. And so now it's just really up going ahead and going around all of the curves and all of the grooves and the planes of this uh, French wedding armoire and getting the paint onto it. I should say that the paint that I am using is a Krylon chalky finish paint from Lowe's and it is the color I wish I could tell you the name of the color you guys I'm sorry of this orange I do not remember but it is a Valspar color so I know I've said in other tutorials and videos that when I go I go to Lowe's to buy 90% of my paint and once in a while I'll order different types of paints and try different variants but I'll go to Lowe's and I'll pick out a Valspar color take it to the paint desk and tell them that I want that color in a Krylon chalky finish paint and so they will mix that up for me so now that my orange is applied and dried which it dried within minutes the chalk paint dries within minutes and that's also why I did on this particular coat like light amount of prep work is because chalk paint is very porous and it adheres to any surface technically you don't have to do prep work such as um, sanding or priming you know pr putting on a primer that type of stuff um, but it does help to when you do take some prep work steps it helps your paint finish to be longer lasting and to harden up some 
So I've applied, gone in here and applied a green and then a very vivid blue. And I know this is going kind of fast, but this armoire is so huge in the process of doing this whole entire armoire took about, I would say probably about maybe 50, 60 hours. So it, it took quite a bit of time to do it. And I tell you what, I wasn't sure. I was just kind of working my way through, but I did a double coat of the orange and you can really see that color begin to pop once it had a double coat and then the green. And then I did brush some blue over uh, some of the details and you can see how that worked out. I am painting this in the middle, like smack dab in the middle of my shop while my shop is open. And so I do have people coming up and talking to me and um, a couple of the ladies that work in our shop from time to time, you might see them come and as well as customers or other people. So this piece was so big and my workshop area where I normally paint was already filled with furniture that had just shipped in and furniture that was shipping out. So this was the only place I had to paint. It was right smack dab in the middle of my shop where items were for sale and people were coming in shopping. So I used a Honey Vanilla by Valspar in the Krylon Chalky Finish Paint to go over a lot of these details. That's kind of that light uh, cream, the brighter color that you'll see like on the sides and then right above the wall panels. And that, guys, I was just really experimenting with the colors at this time. So I went over the top part with just some custom color mixes. The mo most of the time, I will mix and match different colors and blend different colors to see what I'm coming up with. And I'll tell you right here, I am unsure where this piece is going. This was really important for me to show you because a lot of people will see some finished products that I have, like finished pieces of furniture, and say, oh, I could never have your vision, blah, blah, blah. You know, like what great like sight you had for this piece. And I didn't. I mean, that's just the truth. I'm just honestly winging it. I am out of my element, out of my comfort zone with this piece. I have never done these vivid orange, vivid green bright vivid blues before I do gravitate towards greens and blues and such but they're much more muted much softer and this was smack you in the face vibrant and I was loving it but I was having a hard time finding the right colors for the details and there's so much detail on this piece. So I was trying to decide, really kind of stopped, like in second guessing myself and like, is this going to look good? But ultimately, I also knew that if it doesn't work out, there's always something different that I can do. There's another step that I can come and take. So I'm sharing this part of the process with you guys because I want you to know if you're like, oh, like, I don't know what to do now. Like, if you have a certain piece, you're like, I don't know if this is going to work out. Just kind of take a step, apply the brush, try a color of paint. If it doesn't work out, nothing is locked in stone. You can maybe give it a scuff sanding, maybe add some like work it out in layers of paint which is what I did and so I just wanted to let you guys know if you're like I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this piece that's exactly what I was feeling at this point in time so at this point I am still going over the detail with those the really light colors um those light colors really varied around like i had a softer yellow and i also had the honey vanilla some ivory and i just really found myself pulled in two different directions 
one of the directions that I was pulled in, like it became clear to me that this piece was starting to have, um, like I was trying to identify its theme, you know, like what is the overall design theme for this piece? And one, uh, two things that came to my mind was it looks, it reminds me of New Orleans. So it, which I can run with that. I've done New Orleans style pieces before in those bright, vivid colors. I mean, there is a, a place for like vivid, vibrant furniture, New Orleans style furniture. And so that was one thought that kept going through my mind after I was like at about this point, like really after the bright green was on and that orange, the double layer of orange was on and that bright blue, I started getting a very much New Orleans vibe which was fine with me because it really, like New Orleans is French Quarter. There's a lot of French culture, culture in New Orleans. And so, and this is a French wedding armoire. So I was kind of driving with that. And I did like the contrast of the, these lighter colors on the detail. But one thing that was starting to bother me was is that cream colored contrast on the green i also felt like it was very distracting and so now i'm going over it with some gold gilding wax and i was really just trying to like okay so that cream ivory you know those colors those hues were just standing out too much to me and so, and I tried some lighter, a little bit lighter colors, and those were blending in a little too much to me also. So I'm like, well, let's apply some gold. But I tell you what, you guys, when I get to the point where I start applying gold, and this is not everybody's style, gold is not everybody's style, but when I reach that point, I'm starting to find my groove. So you can tell right here what a difference the adding that gold detail made it just to me it made this piece come alive and i really love the contrast with the gold next to the blue it worked great next to the green great next to the orange so all of that was really working for me but i was still a little bothered by just the the stark contrast of all of the white I like the cream color on it and so i'm still at this point trying to find my way with this piece and learn what's going on so i decided i'm just gonna go ahead and work on some more detail and this particular lovebird armoire has a lace-like quality in the detail that completely frames both door panels and it is the most intricate um type of detail that I've seen and worked with. And this is my second armoire that's exactly like this that I've done this lace on. So I guess I'm kind of getting used to it. To date, this is by far my favorite piece of furniture to work on is this Lovebird armoire. Like I said, it's my second one. If I could have a hundred pieces of furniture to work on, I would pick a hundred of my choice i would pick a hundred of these and i would do them in a hundred different ways because they all have so many possibilities so at the very top part i had added some lighter blues grays greens for my detail and there wasn't enough contrast so to me like it looked a little oh kind of blah and muddy-ish so it was going along and i felt like i really need to brighten this up and so I was brightening it up and I liked, you know, definitely the contrast better. And so here's what the final thing product looks like at this point. And then here we go so into I'm this step do here. I have a cream wash on this. I have a cream color chalk paint and I mix the paint 50-50 uh, paint and water. I'm going to brush it on and I'm going to wipe it off and I'm going to try not to make a mess. For me, 
this is the make it or break it moment. I'm either gonna ruin it and start all over, or I'm gonna create something amazing. I really don't think there's any in between. We're gonna find out. So what had happened is, is that I had just sat with this piece for about a week. I let it be in my shop for about a week as it was and trying to decide if I really, really loved it as it was. And I had a couple of thoughts. I don't know. I don't do mainstream furniture at all. But to me, these colors were so vivid um, that I was worried about it possibly not selling. Um, and then, or not selling anytime real, real soon. And so I didn't know, like, would somebody actually like this enough to buy it? And then I think, too, that having the, like, I was, I felt like all of the, the lighter colored detail that I had done to me was distracting because it was such a contrast. Like a contrast is nice, but to me, it was too much of a contrast. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to reroute just a little bit, maybe like 40 degrees, and I am going to see what this looks like cream washed. So on the cream wash, I'm using Honey Vanilla, the Krylon chalk paint in the Valspar color, and I mix that with water and I am just using my brush and going over it. No particular method. The only tip here I really have is to watch your drips. So offload your paint when you dip your paint. And like I just got like a, oh, an old potato salad container. And I had mixed in a cup of paint with a cup of water, maybe a little bit less water than paint. So I said 50-50, it's maybe closer to like a 60-40, so 60 paint, 40 water. And um, you wanna, as when you dip your brush in, you wanna be careful when you're doing a wash because it's a wash is very watery. So, you know, your paint is super watered down. And so you wanna be careful with a, a lot of drip. So you wanna offload your brush you wipe, brush it on, wipe it off. And you can do this back to back as many times as you want. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. So at this point, I am just like putting on my first coats, wiping it off, seeing what's taking place, starting. And you know, when you do a cream wash, it gives you, or you could call it, if you used white paint instead of cream, you call it a white wash. If I use, I've done gray washes before, so that's simply a gray paint mixed with water, and I'll call that a gray wash. I mean, you know, you just really fill in your name and the name of the color that you're using for whatever type of color wash that you're doing. And what I'm loving about this is that those details like really stick out and they protrude. And so that, that color wash, that cream wash is really getting like behind all of the details. And then here we go on the doors. Just, I did love that vivid blue, but I also really wanted to see what this piece would look like softened up. I felt like all the right qualities were here. I felt, I did feel like all the right colors were here, but it just needed, I just didn't feel like it was done before. And so that's why I went ahead with the cream wash. I did love the vibrancy of those colors, but I wanted, I wanted something dreamy. And um, I liked the vibrancy, but I wanted something softer something that was more cohesive and that each part interacted well with one another and i think that's what i was was bothering me before is that each part was not interacting well with one another 
And so a cream wash, as you can see, begins to bring all of this together. So here's a before and after with a really bold in your face. And I think two beautiful piece into, to me, is something kind of storybook-like with lots of time-worn vintage qualities. It To me, it looks very antique, like it has been sitting in a castle for many, many years, just waiting for somebody to come along. And so, and like, you just want to open the doors and see what is stored there. And I didn't have that feeling about it before when it was those super bold colors. So I think what the cream washing did that I'm most pleased about is it just aged it. It subdued it. It muted everything down. It took on um, its own very vintage very French kind of authentic quality. So thank you so much for coming along with this. Please remember that this is a protected video. Please don't share the link. It's for patrons only. God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon.